Hello, welcome, welcome back. I am Savalian, a software dev slash creative, and today is another game dev video. This one's leaning a little bit more towards tutorial land. Uh, I'm gonna talk about, and so in the last video we talked about designing UI, and in this one we're gonna talk about implementing UI. So I use Unity, the game engine, for all my dev work on my game, and I decided when I started this project that I was going to use the new UI toolkit. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. The name of this package is a little bit generic and it's also confusing because when they first announced it, it was called UI Elements, which is even more generic. Uh, and so a lot of the namespaces that the code uses are still called UI Elements. The tool itself, you know, the, the package is called UI Toolkit. Basically, this is a different system than the default UI, which I think is called Unity UI or UGUI. And then the one before that was I am GUI, I think. Uh, the short version is that Unity has gone through a lot of UI systems since I started using Unity almost like 10 years ago at this point. Of course, they all have their little quirks and this one is no different. So this newest one was initially out in the editor for editor UI only, so like extensions to the Unity editor, and then later it was expanded to be used for runtime, which means to, to make UI for the game and not just the editor. As far as I know, it's still not the recommended solution, but they want this to become the recommended solution. It's just not quite done yet. And uh, as I've been using it, I've actually done quite a bit with this system so far. Uh, I've been able to do most of the things I need to do, uh, but some things aren't implemented yet. World space UI, where the, the UI is in the world and not sort of on the top of the screen. There's some other things like UI with lighting. I think there's some limitations to how images can be used. Uh, for example, I couldn't get the radial fill for my radial timer working uh, with, with this UI toolkit, I had to go back to Unity UI. Um, so there's things here and there that are not done or don't exist in the toolkit, but for the most part, uh, I think it's a, it's a pretty decent solution and they're still working on it, so it's gonna get better. So first, I'm gonna briefly talk about how you use the UI toolkit and you know how to get started, how to put some UI on screen, how to interact with it. And then we're going to switch gears and it's going to go into sort of a dev vlog thing where I talk about the UI that I made and how I built it. So first of all, how do you use it? Basic level. For a long time, you had to install a package with Unity's package manager. But now the 2021 LTS version has runtime UI toolkit built in. So you don't need to do anything special. You just need to make sure you're on that LTS version, the 2021 LTS version. But if you are on an older version, you will need to use the package manager to install the UI toolkit, the preview version of it, and also the UI builder. And those are two pieces that I had to actually install. But we're going to move on as though you're on the 2021 LTS version and just get right into it. The UI toolkit is all built on UXML and USS, which are basically HTML and CSS. There's some differences. They're the elements are named different things. The elements work a little bit differently. Um, the, the properties in the style sheet are not exactly one-to-one -one between USS and CSS, but if you have experience with web design and you kind of understand how that works, uh, this is going to be pretty easy for you to pick up, I think. There's also the UI Builder, which is a tool you can use to build the UI, um, as you might expect from the name. So you don't have to write out the UXML or the USS manually, except in some very specific cases. Uh, for example, I ran into an issue with the scroll bar. They did not expose the properties, the style properties of the scroll bar in the Builder. So I had to actually get some special classes in there, which I'll talk about later. Uh, but most things you should be able to do within the builder. To get some UI on screen, all you have to do is first create a UXML file. So you can right click, go under UI toolkit and create a UI document. And then 
create a game object in your scene and add the UI document components to it. And then you can just drag your UI document UXML file from your asset window into the, the slot for the UI document. And you will also need panel settings. So these kind of work, uh, these have the same settings as like the top level canvas in, in UGUI. It kind of explains how your UI scales, what, you know, how you're sizing it, the positioning, where it's rendering to. So this, uh, you should only have to do really once for most of your UI and just reuse the same one. Um, so you can just right click UI toolkit, create a panel settings, make any changes if you want. Um, I think I have changed the scaling, but other than that, I've mostly left it at the default. And then uh, you'll at some point you'll want to double click on your UI document in, in your asset folder. And you can just add, drag and add something to the, the view from the builder. So for my example, I'm just adding a button real quick and then it will be there on screen. You do need to make sure you're looking at the game view. It doesn't show up in the scene view um, unless, but I believe if you're in 2D mode, it will show, but since it's rendering to the camera basically, on top of everything else, you need to make sure you're looking at it in a view that's gonna actually show the UI. And that's the that's the basics of it. Um, so you can just drag elements, reorganize them, change styling, change positioning, and that's how you build your UI in this UI document. And now I'm gonna cover just a quick little tutorial on how to interact with UI in code. So this is what you'll need to do if you want to react to UI events, if you want to change text or images or positioning or styling on the fly or in response to player input. So for this example, I'll just make a script, just a basic script, and then add a public variable where I can drag the UI document into. So we can use this UI document to get references to the individual elements in the UI document so I can get a reference to that button I added. We will need to import unityengine.uielements. This is the old name, like I mentioned the namespace uh, hasn't been renamed so it still says UI elements. That's just a little thing to remember. Uh, and then once I, once I have that imported, I can start using these UI element classes. So things like visual elements, label, button, the, the various uh, UI classes. And the easiest way to get elements from the UI document is to do it by ID, which is the name property right at the very top. If you click on the element in the builder at the very top, you can give it a name. And then in code, all you have to do is on your document reference, do dot root visual element. This is gonna grab the just top level visual element in the file. And then you could do dot Q with um, the triangle brackets to give a type of UI element that you wanna find. This Q, I believe stands for query, just a way to find things in the view. And then I just pass in the name of the element or the ID. You can query on some other attributes as well, but I don't really see a point to that. It's a little bit less precise and I haven't personally encountered a situation where I need to. So I just drop the, the name, the ID right in there and it will give me a reference to whatever type of UI element I put in those triangle brackets. And from here, I can change the text on anything that has text. So on a label, on a button, uh, you can change the style. Uh, I can also register event handlers. So this is where interactivity comes in. I'll just show two quick examples of ways to respond to UI events. So some events like the button have events built in. So the button object, if I do dot, you can see it has a clicked event but you can also register callbacks for pretty much any visual element, I believe, by doing dot register callback, and then in the triangle brackets, uh, the type of event you wanna to register to. So click event is a common one. There's one for mouse enter, mouse leave. Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't used very many other ones, but these this is how you would access any event that you wanna to register to 
on a visual element. And so if I go back to my project and run it, and the first time I did this, I forgot to drag the reference in um, to the UI document. So make sure you do that. And we can see I'm getting both events. So this example is just two ways of registering to the same event, but I could change it if I wanted to, to a hover. I could use one or the other as needed. And then on elements which don't have a built-in clicked event, uh, the register callback is useful for those. So this is basically how the UI toolkit works. So let's get back into Project Caribou, my game, and make some UI. So here we are in my project. I started with the summoning menu because as I mentioned in the UI design video, this is the most important piece of UI in the game. It allows players to make their strategic decisions, summon the right units, and the way I'm planning to build this piece is using a scroll view that scrolls horizontally and by loading uh, the individual items programmatically for each unit. There is a list view, but I found the setup for the list view to be a little bit clunky and I just find it a lot easier to use the scroll view. The, the difference is that the scroll view is just a container basically that scrolls the list view you have to bind all of the stuff in the view to certain elements and you know write code that handles all of that and i i believe there is another little intricacy that made me decide to use a scroll view but i can't remember what it was now it's just a little bit more rigid in my opinion but it is probably more performant. Um, it probably recycles few elements, uh, I would guess, I don't know for sure, but that's probably the benefit to using one over the scroll view. Uh, but since I'm building it this way, I will need the UI that holds the scroll view, and then I will need UI for the individual pieces. And there's a way we can sort of load an entire chunk of UI from code by saving it into its own UI document. So I'm gonna do that. And also in Figma, there's a tab uh, that everyone should be aware of. If you're using Figma, it's inspect. It's in the sort of detail view on the top right. And what this does is it puts you in a mode where you can easily see the widths and heights of things, the distance between separate elements when you hover, all the colors it uses and you can just copy them right from here so that's very handy to have up while you're working on building UI and in unity another little tip is that in the color picker in any color picker in the unity editor you can set a color and then you can click a little square in the bottom of the color picker that lets you save that color and so then it's available there for you in this project whenever you are doing a color pick anywhere. So I've added the dark blue for my UI panels, the light blue, and a white color that I've picked for the text. Building UI is actually kind of relaxing because most of it happens in the UI builder. There's not a lot of like hard thinking that goes into it. You just sort of drag things around, change some number values and see how it looks. And the way the elements kind of work in in UI toolkit is that each element is in a hierarchy somewhere so all the elements can have child elements you can set in the parent how it automatically positions those child elements so you can align things a certain way you can have it sort of apply spacing between items or on the edges of items there's a lot of options here that I recommend you play with a little bit just to get a feel for how it works and starting with the individual unit square UI, so that the pieces in the summoning menu, I've created a visual element that lays out the child elements from top to bottom vertically and aligns them all in the center. There's a square that's currently empty that will eventually contain the icon for the unit, the name, and then I have a visual element that groups together the Borb icon and the Borb cost text. So I use that additional element to create that group so I can keep that entire group centered but lay the items in that group out from left to right. You can also use absolute positioning for things if they don't quite fit into this automatic layout. 
I'm using it for the little icon at the top, so it is positioned sort of independent from the flex layout over the top at this position in the, in the top left corner. The container with the scroll view is pretty simple. It's just a panel, those icons for filtering, and then the scroll view off to the right. And I had to make sure to set the scroll view into horizontal mode so that it lays out the elements horizontally. I believe the default is vertically. And I want to make sure the vertical scroller is turned off. I just want the horizontal one. So how do I get the individual boxes for each unit into the scroll view? Once you have your UI documents made, you can load it in code by using resources.load, just like you would load a prefab or something like that. And then to actually instantiate that UI, you have to use that, that reference to the UI resource and do dot clone tree. And this will create a copy of that UI element. And from there, you can use that Q query function to get each child element that you want to update. So I use it here to set the name of the unit, the cost, get the icon toggled on correctly and things like that. And then I can just use my reference to the scroll view dot add and pass in that element that I've created. So that's pretty much the bulk of the summoning menu. The filtering isn't working yet uh, because I don't have that many units. I didn't really think it was important to work on that right now. Um, but everything else is pretty much just working. And as I'm building out those individual elements and setting the name, I, I can also register a click event on the entire thing. So when it's clicked on, it does the, it calls the same function that the placeholder UI calls to actually summon that unit. Next, I worked on some animations. Uh, I started with just some instant style changes when the items were hovered and I and I initially used register event for this before I realized how I could do it with the style sheet. So I just registered that event, did dot style on the item and changed like the border and stuff. But then I figured out how to use transition properties. So the way I understand these, these having transition properties on the style of an element means that when properties are changed, it will animate according to those transition parameters. So you can do like a duration, you can do a, a style of animation or a, a timing. So it's like, you know, ease in, ease out, ease out in. There's like a whole bunch of options here. I couldn't find the transition parameters in the UI builder though. So I think that's another thing that is missing right now. I had to edit the style sheet file directly but there's a little shortcut in the UI Builder. The USS is at the bottom right and there's a little arrow you can click to open that file in Visual Studio or whatever editor you have connected. And another thing that I, I forgot to actually record, I believe, is that in order to pick which style sheet is applied to the element you're editing, uh, you can add the style sheet in the top left of the UI Builder. Pro tip. Um, if you change the style sheet and then come back to the UI builder, it will erase any changes that you've made there. So before you open it up, before you leave and make changes, make sure that your UI builder stuff is saved um, because it will just sort of discard all the changes you made. Uh, when you come back into the UI builder after changing the style sheet, it will, it will reload and just sort of throw out all those changes, so be careful with that. So for animating my summoning menu, I had it slide up from the bottom with a translate property. So whenever I want to show it uh, with those transition properties in the style, I just change the translate to the position I want it to animate to, and it does. And then when I want to hide it again, I do translate back down to zero and it animates back out. I'm not really sure how many different USS properties the transition works with. I expect it's similar to CSS, but it's been years since I've actively done anything with CSS, so I'm really not sure. Uh, once I got it working with the whole menu, I went back to those individual items 
and instead of registering to this mouse in mouse out callback, I just use the CSS uh, pseudo state, I believe it's called, uh, where you do the colon and then hover and it applies that on hover. So that's a much easier way to do it. I think animations are really important to making UI look polished. Uh, animation and also UI sounds, which I don't have yet, uh, they're both just little things that make it feel complete and professional. Uh, you can overdo it, of course, so I would recommend subtle animations, gentle things, uh, things that are kind of quick and not too obtrusive, um, but I think if you can get just a little bit of movement, a little bit of life into the UI, it makes it look so much better. The next thing I worked on for my UI was actually very tedious, and I hope that they fix this in future versions. But as things are right now, the scroll bar styles aren't exposed anywhere in the UI builder, so you have to overwrite them sort of manually using the style sheet, using the USS. I couldn't find any clear documentation on this, so I had to manually inspect the scroll bar, change things, and then run it to see if the change actually did what I wanted it to do because some of the preview styles are not what you see in when you're running it in the game. And this is something I probably should have mentioned earlier, but there's just a couple of bugs with the UI builder. Um, I've noticed that text by default in the UI builder shows as a light color, but if you don't actively change it, it's a dark color when you run it, so you have to overwrite the text colors in order to get them to show up the way that they do in the builder. This is probably due to some like default styles being used in the runtime version and not in the UI builder version. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but um, I have needed to run the UI a lot to make sure that the styles are applying the way that I want them to. But what I did find out is that there is a special inspector for debugging your UI while it's running. You can go to window and actually open a UI debugger. And this works a lot like the UI debugger that's built into web browsers. You can just see all the elements in the hierarchy. You can click into them to see what styles are active on that element. And you can see which styles are contributing to which property values. So like you can see where the colors are coming from, whether it's a default unity style or one of your custom styles. So the way I used this was I put the scroll bar in and then I went in and I inspected all of the different default styles that were giving it the colors and the shape that it had. And then I was just adding those to my custom style to overwrite them. It was, a it was tedious, like I mentioned, but it worked. I got everything styled the way that I wanted it to. So I hope this kicks you off on the right foot if you also want to style your scroll bar because they really don't make it easy. The last little bit I'll cover in this video is the details pop-up. In order to keep the UI clean, I decided to put specific unit details in a little info panel when you hover over the unit instead of trying to fit it all into the menu itself. In the hierarchy, I put this at the same level as the summoning menu and offset it so it would sit just above it where I've got it in my design. It is hidden by default, well actually it's gone so that I can't, so it doesn't absorb clicks, um, and it changes to being visible in the hierarchy only when a unit is hovered on. So I built out this little view the same way I built out anything else. I use visual elements to group together things that need to be positioned together. So the move text, each of these little sections of text are their own group. And then those groups together are laid out in the container visual element. I'll also mention that in all the places I have these roll icons for tank, DPS, and heals, because there's only three, I decided to have all the images present in the view at design time and then just turn them visible or, or hidden as needed. Another way to do this if you have images where there's a lot more options, you don't want to just have all of them in the view all the time, uh, you would load the sprite resource in code 
and then add that to the background style. Um, so that's another way to do it. Uh, I will do that for the icons, um, but I don't have them ready for this video, so I can't demonstrate it. That's kind of the thinking behind that. If there's just a couple of things that need to get swapped out, um, I'll probably just do it at design time so I can make sure it looks good, make sure it's positioned correctly, sized correctly. But if there's a lot of potential images or elements that could be there, I would move it into the code and do it that way. So this little window is not too complicated. It's mostly text. It's mostly just getting things positioned, you know, the way that they are in my Figma designs. Put all of that together and I have one whole piece of the UI done. Well, most of one piece. I still have to get the filtering code done and make some icons, but the bulk of it is done and I think it looks great. This video is just a little peek into how Unity's UI toolkit slash UI elements works. It's been pretty cool so far, a little bit finicky, a little bit uh, quirky as I mentioned, but uh, I would recommend using this if you've got a new project and you want to sort of stay on that cutting edge, uh, but I maybe wouldn't recommend it for existing projects where you're gonna have to refactor a lot of stuff because I'm just not quite sure it's there yet. But it's definitely fun to at least play around with. It's doing it for me. It's pretty easy to, to learn, especially since I have a little bit of a web design background. Uh, but that's it. Next up is getting the rest of the HUD built out. So slow progress over the next week, week and a half. And then uh, my my game part of my game, not the menus, but the, the active part of the game is going to have its pretty face on and, and it's going to really look like a real game. Someone in my Discord mentioned that, how it's, it's really starting to look like a game with the UI in there, which warms my heart. And that's all I've got for you today. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, videos about game development, creativity, game reviews, art, uh, pretty much whatever I feel like making uh, within the parameters of my interests. I'm doing my Game Dev December right now where I post Game Dev updates on Instagram every single day in December and it's going great. So thank you so much for watching, I'll be back soon with another video and I hope to see you there. Bye bye!